Hey everybody, welcome back to Run and Gun. I'm JT. Welcome to the channel. If you're new, make sure you hit that subscribe button. So today we're here in Lightroom and I've never really done a basic raw editing tutorial. So I figured we'd do that here today in Lightroom and we're gonna look at some of my before and after shots that I shot with a model in New York City. And I really just wanna emphasize the power of raw files. So if we look at this image here, I shot at the vessel in New York City. Um, here's the before and here's the after and here is the final shot that's going to go on Instagram after I brought this image into Photoshop and did a little bit more tweaking with the color threw a custom LUT on it and we'll talk about that later but for now I just want to go over some basic raw editing techniques and just very basic raw editing in Adobe Lightroom because not everyone knows how to do it and you got to start somewhere and I think shooting raw is extremely important and if you haven't watched it already, make sure you check out my RAW versus JPEG video. If you're just shooting JPEG now, I think you're really missing out on a lot of the potential of RAW. There's just, if I were to drag my exposure slider here just for an example, there's just so much that I can do with this image. And look at, there's so much detail I can get in the clouds, and there's so much detail I can bring back in the shadows. So I'm gonna undo all of these, and I'm gonna show you guys the before again and the after. So let's talk about this image a little bit. Uh, I shot it super wide, 14 millimeters, ISO 320, and I can see all of these up here in this little histogram window. That's what's awesome about using Lightroom, and that's really why I like it so much. Everything is so simple, and it's right here at your fingertips. So f6.3 and a 200th of a second. So if you take a look up here in the upper right, you can see my histogram in Lightroom. And this is basically just a graphical representation of all of the tones in my image. So you can see over here are my white values. You can see I have a little bit of white up here in the sky. I have my highlights. I have some highlights up here, just a little bit darker than the white values. I have my midtones right here. So anything in between my shadows and my highlights like over here are gonna be my midtones. And then you can see, since this image is a little bit dark, most of my values are sitting in the shadows and the blacks right here. So a neat little thing about this histogram that some people don't know, I can actually edit my image directly by sliding left and right up in this histogram slider. So let's say I wanted to bring my exposure up a little bit, I can click and drag to the right and that brings my exposure up. And you can see how it also adjusts my exposure slider right here. And let's say I wanted to bring my shadows up even more, drag those to the right. And once you realize you can't drag any farther, if I scroll down here, my shadow slider has been dragged all the way to the right. And 100 is the maximum value that I can drag my shadow slider to. So let's start here up at the top. I'll undo all of my changes. So this is the final image that we're gonna go for, just doing a basic raw edit because, you know, if you shoot JPEG, JPEG looks pretty good coming straight out of the camera. It has nice contrast and it looks pretty decent. And when you shoot a raw file, it looks pretty flat like this and it looks pretty dull. So I'm gonna show you guys how to take your dull looking raw image and make it look good because you have so much data to work with versus a JPEG image and you can make such a nicer image. So what I'm gonna do is duplicate this image, create a virtual copy, and that's just gonna create another copy here in Lightroom. And it doesn't actually create another image on my hard drive and it doesn't take up more hard drive space, which is another awesome thing about Lightroom. All it does is create a virtual copy of the edits on this image, so it's all non-destructive. So what I'm gonna do now is go up to settings, reset all settings, and here is my basic raw file. And as I said before, it's very boring. It's both overexposed and it's underexposed. You can see from my histogram, the highlights are almost peaking on this side and the blacks are just about clipping on this side. I can click this little box up here and it'll show me what's clipping over here. There's some minor details in here that I've lost, but that's okay. And if I click this little triangle up here, it'll show me what's clipping in the whites, and thank goodness there's nothing clipping in the whites. It should show up as little red dots. 
and the underexposed area should show up as little blue dots. And if you clip either your whites or your blacks, that just means that's data that's always going to be white or black and you will never get the details back. So let's scroll down here. First thing I usually do is crop the image. For this one, it's super wide and I think I'm going to crop it at a 16 by 9. Just kind of get it where I want it. Make sure it looks nice and symmetrical and my model is dead center. That looks good right there. And for right now, out of these tools, we're just gonna go through the basic editing and just use the cropping tool over here. Now, if we go down to treatment, I have the option of clicking either color or black and white. And in this instance, I'm going to keep it on color, but you can see if I have black and white selected, it will gray out my vibrance and saturation sliders. So just know if you click black and white and you lose these sliders down here, all you have to do is go back to color and these vibrance and saturation sliders will come back to you. So I white balance properly in camera, but I do have the option to make this image a little bit cooler because it was a very overcast and cool day. So I'll turn down my color temperature, but this is where I can do any of my white balance editing if I messed it up in camera or while I was out shooting. It's an option that I have with RAW that I don't have when I shoot JPEG. And in this instance, I could always go in. There's some nice uh, Converse sneakers here. I can go in and white balance off of these white areas of the Converse sneakers, or I could even go in and white balance off of these train roofs right here. They're all pretty neutral color if I wanted to, but for right now, I'm gonna do a custom white balance, make it pretty cool maybe turn this down to 5600 and that looks pretty good the next thing i'm going to do is tone my image and you can see this in the tone menu right here if you want to do something fast and easy you can always click auto this is lightroom's basic auto edit it doesn't look too bad it's a great place to start and i can always start moving my sliders from here so if i did click the auto button i'll always go in and make little minor adjustments of my own so we can go in and we can do that right now or we can undo this auto and i'll show you guys what each of these little sliders does all right so our first slider here is exposure and you can see if i move it to the right it turns our whole exposure up and you can see everything in our histogram moves to the right and if i were to turn this down it turns our whole exposure down and you can see now we're losing a bunch of detail on the shadows over here but now we're not clipping highlights and all of our highlights are now in this mid-tone range you can see we brought back all of this detail in the sky which is great but we lost all of our detail with our model and when you're shooting with a subject especially when you're doing portraits you want to make sure that your subject is properly exposed because that's the key part of your image and if your subject is not properly exposed then your image is essentially not properly exposed so there's a little portrait tip right there if you're shooting portraits make sure your person is properly exposed even if that means the background's a little bit dark or the background's a little bit bright if your person is properly exposed people will look at your portrait and know that it is properly exposed so what i'm going to do is turn up the exposure just a touch so the next slider we have here under exposure is contrast and contrast basically pushes your black areas and shadows away from your highlights and your whites and gives your image more of a contrasty look versus a flat look so if i pull this slider to the right you can see how our midtones are being pushed to the left and pushed to the right so anything that's light is being pushed brighter and anything that's dark is being pushed even darker so in this particular image i'm going to keep our contrast kind of low and make sure that we're not losing any detail on the blacks or any detail in the whites for right now now what i'm going to do is i'm going to come back to contrast later on and add a little bit of that later so the next slider here is highlights and you guessed it it selects your highlights and adjusts them so for this particular image I'm gonna drag my highlights down and again, pay attention to this histogram up here. It's really important, I think, when I edit my photos to pay attention to your histogram. I'm gonna keep sliding down and as I slide to the left to negative 100, you can see I just regained all of this detail back in the clouds. 
I can see clouds now instead of just an overcast sky. And I think that adds a lot to the image. There were some kind of blown out areas over here. But again, because I was shooting raw, I have the option to bring all of that data back because the camera did capture that information and it's there. Just be careful if you are sliding your slider all the way, either right or left. Sometimes you can have some unintended effects if you push things too far. So just a warning. And now we're gonna move down to shadows and shadows does the exact opposite of highlights. It affects this little shadow region right here and you can see it highlight up here in the histogram when I select that slider. So you can see highlights there and shadows there. It's just showing that region of the histogram that I'm affecting. So what I wanna do is I wanna bring my shadows up quite a bit and again with raw, I'm bringing all this data back into the midtones, and this is where I want a lot of my information in this midtone area. Every image is different, but this one in particular, I want that data in the midtones just so it's properly exposed. So I'll turn my shadows up just a little bit, and you can see our image is looking a tiny bit flat. So this is a chance we can come in here and we can bring our contrast back in our image. You can see if I push this too far, that's a little bit too much. And if I don't go far enough, the image looks very flat. So I'm gonna come in here and just kind of tweak the contrast. It might be a little bit much. I think 30 looks pretty good. And again, don't forget to come in here, check 100%, especially if your model or subject is kind of far away and make sure there's nothing crazy happening with the skin tones, especially if you're working on a portrait. And our next two sliders over here are our whites and our blacks and they affect the very outside areas of our histogram. So I'm gonna bring down the blacks just a touch and you can see if I crank that, it will crush our shadows into the black areas and I really don't want that. And same thing, if I move the white slider way up, you can see it flattens out my whole histogram and it clips my whites and I don't want that. So I'm actually gonna bring the whites down just a touch so I'm not losing any of the detail in the sky. And you can see I brought down the blacks just a touch ever so slightly to where I want them. I can always come back and adjust all of these. I don't wanna push them too far because I like some of the details in this image, but I also don't wanna lift my shadows because that's not what the photograph looked like when I was seeing it through my camera. So around here is right about what looks good to me. So if we scroll down here, the next section of our basic editor, we can see presence and the tools in presence are clarity, dehaze, vibrance, and saturation. Now clarity is something you really wanna be careful with it. I highly recommend not using it, and if you do, only use it very slightly. So you can see here, if I turn clarity all the way down, it makes my image look blurry, and if I turn clarity all the way up, it kind of gives the image an over-sharpened look, and it really brings out noise and grain, so be careful with this. Sometimes it's really cool to go in there and crank the details, but remember, if your details are overpowering your portrait and the center of interest isn't the person that you're taking the photo of, you're kind of not accomplishing your mission of highlighting your subject, but sometimes that might be the effect that you want. And dehaze right below clarity has a similar effect. If I pull the slider to the left, it adds kind of an artificial fog or haze to my image. And if I pull the slider to the right, it would dehaze my image and it kind of cuts through that atmospheric effect you see on photos of, let's say, landscape. You can see here the hazier parts of my image, the clouds, the sky, the top of these buildings. It adds some blacks and some shadows up there and would cut through the haze. But in this case, I really don't have any haze or clouds that I need to cut through. Maybe if I were on the other side of the vessel, and I was in a couple instances where I wanted to see more of the background over here on the other side of New York. This is actually New Jersey over here. But this might be a case where I would use the dehaze slider. And you can see I'm gaining detail back over here. So let's go back to our image that we were working on. Here we are. So vibrance and saturation are very similar tools. Saturation is something I'll use a little bit less than vibrance. I like vibrance a little bit better because vibrance was actually made to protect skin tones. Now, I'll give you guys an example of that. If I were to crank my saturation up, these oranges look terrible. All of these colors look terrible. 
the skin tones look terrible. Let's put saturation back to zero. You can also double click these sliders and they will go back to zero. That's a little Lightroom shortcut. Now if I were to crank vibrance all the way up, you can see it affects the blues as much as it affects the oranges and my skin tones look almost the exact same. There was a very minor change when I cranked the vibrance versus when I cranked the saturation, the skin tones turned orange. Vibrance is actually a smart tool and it looks at your image and it protects your skin tones while increasing the saturation of some of the other colors in your image, especially blues. Now that looks pretty cool because some of these buildings were pretty blue, but they weren't that blue. So I'm gonna turn my vibrance down pretty much all the way. I think that looks good right there. So I'm gonna make some minor adjustments with the crop. I might bring my subject up in the frame a little bit so I can center her right there. That looks pretty good. And I'm seeing some of these warm areas of the vessel under here, kind of the brassy areas. And I might actually warm the image up just a touch. So I am gonna go in here and I'm gonna white balance off these sneakers. Let's see what that looks like. That's still pretty cool, but that looks good. I might turn it up by hint right there. That looks pretty good. So you can see here, we've brought our image pretty far. If we go up to settings and reset all settings, here was our original image. And if I hit command Z, here's how far we've taken it. So again, I'll go in and I'll make some minor adjustments just to make it look the way I want it to. I think there is one more thing I wanna to touch up here in this top menu bar. And that is these two filters up here. I have a gradient filter and I have a radial filter. And the radial filter is just a circle and the gradient filter is a filter that is a straight line. So let's say I wanted just one section of my image to be lighter or darker or maybe another color or have more contrast. I can choose this gradient filter right here and we'll reset that. And I can slide my gradient filter down. I'll actually turn on show selected mask overlay and it will show everything that's going to be affected in red up here. So I can shut that off for right now. But if I wanted to turn my exposure down in just the sky, I can make my sky darker and I can adjust where this gradient is. And the top and bottom here, up here is 100% of the gradient, up here is about 50% and down here is zero. So that means everything below this line is not being affected. Everything in this area is getting about zero to 50% of the mask effects that I apply here. And everything up here is getting somewhere between 150%. So if I brought it all the way down here, all of my image up here is being affected by this gradient. But this is a really great tool for skies and I can make little adjustments here. I can rotate here. Maybe if I had half of my image left and right that I wanted different exposures, but let's click delete and get rid of that. What I actually wanna do is a radial mask here. So I'm going to click and drag and put it around my subject. And then I'm going to turn up the exposure just a bit. And now you can see my subject starts to pop. Now I can do all of the effects that I can normally do on my raw image just within this little circular window here. I can warm up my subject a touch. I can turn up the contrast. I can turn up the highlights. I can turn up the whites, kind of make the highlights pop a little bit. So I'm gonna go in here and make some minor edits. And again, I can click show mask overlay and this is the area that's being affected by my mask. And if I really scroll down, I can decide if I want to invert or feather. So feathering will just blur the area that's being affected. If I wanna just straight lines, you can see here that there's kind of a nasty straight line around my subject what's being affected here by the exposure. And I really don't want that. I really wanna feather this so it looks natural. And you really can't tell now that I even did anything to my subject. My subject just pops and that looks great. And again, I have more options down here. Sharpness, saturation, dehaze, clarity. I'll just make some more minor adjustments. Here I can turn up the shadows even more. So 
back when I was in my basic editing tools, I had cranked my shadows to 100 and it stopped right there at the end of the slider. I can crank my shadows to 100 all over again. I really don't want to do that because it doesn't look good, but just know that if you throw a filter on something, you can push the sliders even farther than you could before. So when I'm all done here editing, I can click done and that looks pretty good. And if I ever want to go back and edit that filter again, I can just click the filters over here and this little dot shows me exactly where my filter was at. So let's take a look here at the before and after. So there was before and there's after and you can, oh, look how much that makes the subject pop. Done. I think that looks pretty good. So remember up here, some pretty powerful tools, the gradient filter and the radial filter, very powerful for especially landscapes and portraits. And before we finish up, one of the last things I'll do to my images is go down to the detail menu here. And you can see I have a 100% zoomed in window here. If I click this little guy right here, you can see I can pick what part of my image I wanna zoom in on in my little detail window. So if I'm doing a portrait, I'll usually go right into the face or the eyes. So I have my little detail window here. I can also just zoom into my image as well, but this is just kind of like a little shortcut to zooming into 100%. Now, one thing I'll always do to all of my images is sharpen them just a touch. And in this case, we did bring up our shadows and that did bring out a little bit of noise in our shadows. So I will use my luminance noise reduction and turn that up a little bit. So you can see some of our little dots and noise here just kind of disappears and everything looks a little bit smoother. I'm also gonna turn up my details just a little bit. This is the very fine details in the image. And you can see we have this radius slider right here. If I crank this all the way to the right, and I'll turn this up so you can see the effect, it'll affect larger details in the image and that also brings out some of the noise. So I'm gonna turn my radius down. If I turn it really down far, you can see it's also bringing out some of the noise because a smaller radius affects smaller details in the image. A larger radius emphasizes the larger details in the image. So I like to keep that right around one pixel and I like to keep the amount somewhere between 50, 60, 70. It'll depend on what you're shooting. So that's all up to taste. And then I'll throw up my details a little bit. And another cool tool is masking in the sharpening window. If I hold the Alt key and I slide my masking slider here, you can see my image is completely white when this masking tool is at zero. That means all of my image is being affected by the sharpening. Now, if I were to slide this masking slider onto the right, you can see I start getting these weird kind of neon light effects. And everything that is white in the image means that it's being sharpened and everything that is black in the image means that it's not sharpened. So if I really wanted precise sharpening, and I wanna tell Lightroom exactly what I want sharpened in the image, like the face and over here and here, but I don't want areas that are noisy here. I can just slide my masking tool and not sharpen these noisy areas so I'm not bringing back noise in my image. So for right now, I just want all of my image sharpened. So I'll turn my masking down to zero. Again, all white means completely sharp and the areas of black are not being sharpened. So I'll turn that down for now. And I can do the same thing with my sharpening. If I hold Alt and I slide to the left or right, it makes my image black and white, just so I can see what exactly the sharpening tool is doing a little bit better so the colors aren't distracting my eyes. And same thing if I hold Alt and I turn noise reduction all the way up, it'll make my image black and white so I can actually see the noise. You can see it's very soft now if I turn it to 100%. You never really wanna turn your noise reduction to 100%. It turns your image into a kind of a mush. So let's turn that down quite a bit, down to about 20 and wait for it to load. There we are. So now I can see the details in the face again. I'll let go of the Alt key. That brings our color back and we'll zoom out and that looks pretty good. Remember, here is our before 
and here is our after. So I think that's all for this video. Again, RAW is such a powerful tool. I would have never been able to do this with a JPEG image. All of my highlights would have been lost. All of my shadow detail would have been lost. Everything in the subject's face would have been lost. And this was a really difficult scene because I have very dark darks and very bright brights. And the dynamic range of the camera was just struggling to capture all of that. And it would not have been able to capture all of those details in a JPEG. But I was shooting on the Nikon D750, which has a great dynamic range when you're shooting raw. So that is all for this basic Lightroom editing tutorial. And basic raw editing workflow. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like, make sure you hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to drop me a comment down below on what kind of videos you'd like to see in the future because I'm always open for suggestions. So I'll see you guys next week, and until next time, get out and go shoot.